Now, on New Year's Day, former Rwanda spy chief Patrick Karejea, if you want, you can call him Kano, was found dead in his hotel room in Johannesburg. Circumstances leading to his death remain unknown. However, South African police said they're conducting investigations and in our special edition of Newsnight tonight, we seek to find out how founded the allegations that Karejea's murder was politically motivated and an assassination are true. That on Newsnight this evening, of course, joining us, Andrew Mwenda, who has, um, of course, been busy, busy man today. I had to drag you out of um, your usual business. Andrew Mwenda, journalist, CEO of the Independent Magazine. Andrew, quickly. Why didn't you mention that you dragged me out of the swimming pool? I, I, that's what I'm saying. And, uh, because many had asked you to actually uh, uh, talk about this, uh, especially your special relations with uh, Karejea himself, mm -hmm. your special relations with Rwanda, your relations mm -hmm. with uh, Paul Kagame, the president. And it was only right that you'd be the person to speak because mm -hmm. up to date, the Rwanda government has remained silent on the issue of uh, Patrick Karejea. Did you ask a question and they refused to answer it? Yes, uh, all questions asked both to the Rwanda government and uh, the High Commission, whether in Uganda or even in South Africa, have met one answer, that we await the investigations of the South, South African police and then we will give you uh, a feedback or we will even provide a, a statement. Uh, just quickly, um, the death of Karajaya, what do you make of it? But first of all, in fact, I'm happy you have informed me about what the Rwanda government said, which I find responsible. You see, when Patrick died, there's a young man who I met when he was either 18 or 19 years. He's called Ivan Okuda. And I think he is one of the most promising journalists that he, this country has. So Ivan went on his Facebook page and posted, Kagame, this uh, demented psychopath of a murderer. He said all sorts of things. I said, you know, I, something said, you, should you ask him on Facebook? Should you call Ivan? He's a young man, must be about 20 now. He was in senior four when I first met him. So he must have been 16. And I have this great admiration for him as a young upcoming journalist. Now, let me tell you, Morris, the following principles define journalism. A, we must be truthful and accurate. Two, we must be fair and balanced. Three, we must provide context. But most important, above every single thing else, we must be skeptical as journalists. Patrick Karajay has died. It's a tragedy. We don't know who killed him and why. So this young upcoming journalist, I think he's now at university, is already condemning, one, you have condemned Kagame and convicted him, even before an investigation. Uh, just yes. because I wanted to follow this. It's yes, very because important it's not just him. Many have actually Facebook, condemned the president. I have gone, yes. Everyone is attacking this. And then I ask myself, you know, I had lost my faith in the wickedness of man. Yes. And I think that faith has now returned that people just can be naturally wicked. Because for me, when a person dies, the first thing is skepticism. Mm, what has happened? Who could have done it? And I feel the government of Rwanda has responded in the most careful manner. If you are a government, let an investigation happen. Don't prejudice the investigation. When facts are established, because now let me ask you, Maurice, for this boy, Ivan Okuda, as, and so even my greatest hero, Wafolo Gutu, he what was there accusing Kagame. Assuming an investigation is done and they find that the person responsible for killing Patrick Karajaya was someone Karajaya was sleeping with his wife, or they fought over money, what will all these people say? You're leading to that, Andrew, mm. and the reason why many are actually accusing the Rwanda government and pointing fingers mm. at the president is that there were two assassination attempts on uh, renegade general Kayumba Nyamwasa mm -hmm. in so, South Africa. So, uh, and 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 the fact that again so, another Ami Ami man officer mm. Kano uh, on on first of July, on, I mean of this month, uh, which was just on when, on Wednesday, um, mm. was killed. Uh, or strangled to death in his mm. hotel room again in South Africa uh, and now I'm told the South African police says they're looking for men of Rwanda descent who actually uh, were caught on CCTV you, 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 quickly you uh, see why uh, the but, fingers but, are but, being pointed but, but, on the Rwanda, but, but to the Rwanda you know, government Morris, we can uh, first of all let me tell you this one South Africa has the highest level of crime of any city in Africa especially Agreed. Johannesburg Fact. so would you be surprised that somebody could try to kill, kill somebody in South Africa that's one two Patrick Karejea and uh, Kayumba Nyamwasa were chiefs of intelligence in Rwanda. Kare, Kayumba had even been an army chief of staff. I am sure in that position they must have angered very many people. Am I right? So whenever somebody dies, any basic person with fairness, with the uh, perspective, you first say, who are the likely beneficiaries from the death of this person? 
Let me begin because Patrick Karija used to be my very close friend. In fact, it's Patrick who introduced me to President Kagame. If Patrick died, the first question for me is who is likely to profit from this death? Yes. Because any investigation and prosecution has to establish intention. Let me say, one, he was the chief of intelligence. As chief of intelligence, he must have conducted operations on behalf of the state that must have stepped on the toes of very many people. So Patrick naturally would have very many people who would want to eliminate them. Rwanda government is one of the institutions or persons, I would say, has an interest. Perhaps because he has a lot of secrets. But so many other intelligence organizations of all other countries against whom he was fighting have, have an interest in him. He does business. I don't know what quarrels he has with business associates. Two, uh, he possibly had affairs. I will give you an example. There is a man called Christopher Matata, who was a musician in Rwanda. He went to South Africa last year, 2013, and died in a hotel. Are you aware? No, he died immediately after a show in Cape Town. Yes, his show. But I do not know whether people followed the news, because apparently Matata arrived in, in Johannesburg, found a pretty young lady uh, from Burundi, and went to a hotel and was have, having fun with her. It turns out this girl was a, a girlfriend to Patrick Karajaya. So Patrick Karajaya sends this girl with a man called Antoine to go and I think they tranquilize this man, yes, yes. take his information from him, yes. from his phone and all this, and they, give him a, they put a tablet into his drink. The guy takes the drink and leaves to go to Cape Town, yes. the show, when he comes from the show, he dies of multiple organ failure. On the internet, for the last one month, there has been a lot of debate by the family because the Murundi girl later went to Burundi and said everything that happened, how it is Patrick Karajaya who had given her this tablet, which they put into Matata's, and Matata died. He was a celebrity musician in Rwanda. Don't you think the family of Matata had an interest in Patrick Karajaya? Let's, let's, let's expand. So for me, therefore, let's, I'm saying, yes. the first thing that you need to do, either whether you are a responsible journalist, yes. is to say, who are the likely beneficiaries? Now let me tell you another thing. Yes. Along, across the whole internet, people are accusing Kagame. It seems to me that the only person who had anything to lose if Karajaya died is Kagame. Therefore, he had the least interest in killing him because if he did so, if Karajaya died, everybody would accuse him. D do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Andrew. Now, but, now yes. but let me say this. Yes. Let me even not get President Kagame personally and his government of the who and say, okay, maybe right now we can see the costs of the death of Karajaya on the government of Rwanda are very high. So it, naturally, it would appear that no government would try to do something that would bring it so much uh, opprobrium. But for government of Rwanda to decide that they are going to kill Karajaya, there must have been a benefit they are going to get that is far in excess of the costs of this attack they are suffering from. All right, Andrew. If those yes. benefits existed, Morris, yes. what would it mean? It would mean either Karajaya was doing something that was of such strategic risk to the security of the state of Rwanda that he had to be eliminated. All right, and let me tell you yes. this, uh, 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 Maurice. Yes. You can go out there and moralize and pontificate. Yes. If you ever threaten the security of any state, whether yes. it's Norway, the United States, UK, Rwanda, Uganda, or anywhere, you'll become a target. That is why I wanted to come to that. We want to expand that debate. I want to play this, because mm. not many have actually seen Kano Karajaya speak, mm. uh, speak. But let me actually play this bite. Uh, this was uh, Kano Karajaya speaking um, in South Africa in 2010. And then later, we have also another bite of uh, uh, Patrick Karajaya speaking in 2004, while he was still serving as Kano in the RPA. Let's listen in. Any high level of arrogance to think that you walk into somebody's country in the middle of the World Cup, everybody's focusing on the World Cup, and you know, shoot uh, some dissident general, uh, then of course you guys in the press will turn off from the World Cup and talk about the crime that has been committed. So I don't know how you solve political crimes by murder. Well, first of all, I think uh, the significance of that is that for us we go there with a specific background. In other words, we won't be surprised by anything. Whatever is being talked about, we've gone through it. So it's not going to shock any of our troops because they have seen it all. So it's uh, it's an added advantage that you are not be going you are not going to be drawn into things you you you, you didn't expect. We've seen it before, and we expect to see much more of that. That was uh, Patrick Karajaya speaking. The first bite is in 2010 when he was speaking about the uh, attempted assassination, or you can call it shooting, of uh, uh, Kayumba Nyamwasa. And then the, la the last bite we just ran was him speaking as an RPF officer uh, about the war in Kisangani. Andrew, I hope that <coughs> was 2004. He was one yes, of the yes. chief intelligence officers there in Kisangani. Andrew, f before we discuss... <coughs>
the larger and expand this debate i want you to first of all describe who karija was because he started off here in uganda was born he here in 1970 started, but also started, started, started yes tried to go to Luero, was yes. arrested spent most of his life actually from 1981 or 82 he was in uh, luzira up to 85 he was arrested by the okelos yes then he joined nra worked with military intelligence Stayed actually in Uganda, never left Uganda. He served as Kagame's deputy in DMI, uh, military uh, he intelligence. He was among the people working with President Kagame yes. in military intelligence, but he never fought in the Bush war. Yes. After the liberation of Rwanda, he went and became Director General of External Security up until he was removed in 2004. But I want to come back to these issues. Yes. You see, it is important to have perspective on these issues. I have already told you that the assassination of Karija, if I and Rwanda had an, a, a problem with Karija, yes. and I decided to kill him, I knew the usual suspect would be the government of Rwanda. So anyone who had an interest to kill Karajaya knew whom they would blame. So it becomes obvious to me who is much, because I oh, always, interest. you Go see, I should tell you this, Maurice. Normally, when you're going to analyze, most, most people there are exhibiting emotions on the internet. Yes. You see, when you're going to analyze an issue, you must distance your personal emotions from the subject. So that, so that you are not guided by your feelings. All right. You are guided by a, an objective assessment of the issues. Because yes. I'm asking you, who was going to benefit? So to kill Karija, you needed to benefit from it. If the government of Rwanda was going to kill him, it had to do a cost-benefit analysis. It would say, what are the costs of us killing him? We are going to suffer a lot of international attack. Yes. And therefore, the benefits of killing him must exceed those costs. For those benefits to exceed the costs, there must be a serious and immediate danger. Karija posed the security of the state. Now, let me tell you, we can moralize, but even in the Vatican, if you threaten the security of the Vatican, I don't think you would survive for a very long time. That's that's where I want us so, to pick from Andrew and mm -hmm. say it's it's not lost on anyone. The people who are actually watching and listening in and saying it's mm -hmm. happened before. Russia has killed its own critics. Uh, Russia, wherever they've been Russia, in the world. Russia, why are you going not to Russia? Not just Russia, yes. Let me begin Britain and yes. the United States. Exactly. You heard here, from the debate. Here, and, and here, so yes. that, Let that me tell you. It may not Osama be Kagame, Kagame, by the way. Let me ask you. The debate is, Ob it, could not be, it may not be the president, Kagame. It could be the military. He served. Uh, but, but you see, what I can say is that but the state, the, the those, we yes. need to address the issue of the state. You see, President Barack Obama, hmm? I would imagine he's a good man. He came attacking uh, Bush, saying, oh, Guantanamo Bay will close it. Is it close it? There are people there held without trial. Yes. Even here in Uganda, the United States run is a prison. Up there on summit view. Let's discuss this. So, but this one, yes. yes, this one. Politically I'm motivated. You have followed Israel. Yes. You have followed the United States. Yes. I, I don't know about Norway, but I know the Vatican. If you threaten the security of the state, if people say that Kareja either had organized a terrorist organization or a rebel group, a liberation movement, whatever mm. you call it, threaten the security of the state of Rwanda, then he was an enemy. Because let me ask you, another thing is, assuming Patrick Karajaya had a 1% chance of getting near Kagame with a gun, or getting somebody into Kagame's bedroom with a gun, you think Patrick would have spared Kagame? So, if you enter a violent contest with individuals or with the state, even within the mafia groups, you know the consequences of it. So, what I'm saying is, for me, it looks obvious that the least person to benefit from the death of Karajaya was the government of Rwanda. If because the uh, killing of Karija inflicts heavy costs on the government of Rwanda, the only gov way government of Rwanda could be involved in the assassination of Karija would be where they say the cost of us killing him, the benefits rather exceed the costs. And what would those be benefits? It would mean that Karija would have posed a severe and immediate security risk to the state and the politics of Rwanda, and there that is the only justification. And in those circumstances, in Rwanda, if they have sufficient intelligence. This, I have seen a lot of Rwandan intelligence, yes, by the way, yes. which linked him to grenade attacks inside Rwanda, yes, which in linked city. him yes. to FDLR, yes. which linked him to the rebellion taking place in Eastern Congo against Rwanda. So he has been involved in all these things. All these things placed him at risk. But another thing is, uh, Maurice, you know, perhaps many Ugandans, especially those working in security, should understand. Uh, the basic problem of Africa is that I think we African elites lack a common agreement on basic national goals. Do you think, I however much a head of CIA may disagree with Bush or, or, or Clinton or yes. Blair, whatever it is, yes. can leave government and go and begin revealing the secrets of the state? Because and if you were a chief of intelligence of the country, you go to Exeg, you begin uh, hobnobbing with the chiefs of intelligence of other countries. Yes. State may be scared that you reveal secrets. In True. fact, you can clearly see that the government of Rwanda is highly restrained. Yes. For eight years, Karija has been in exile, speaking on television, criticizing the government, revealing secrets that they killed. So, so in, uh, didn't he say they killed Senator Shong yes. or something? Yes. 
and they have been restrained. So I, it, for me, from the evidence of Karajaya's survival, it tells me that the government of Rwanda has been very restrained. Let me tell you, if you're head of CIA, and you can't say anything secret that CIA did, I promise you, Maurice, you cannot last more than five hours. You normally die of right. o multiple organ failure, or you die of cancer. <laughs> Andrew, but that's what happened. Yes, Andrew. Or you die in a plane crash. Yes, Andrew. Um, very quickly, um, mm. many will say that Karaje was a leader of a party, that, that him and, 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 and others, including Kayumba, had formed the Rwanda National Congress. He, he might have probably uh, been offering the other, um, uh, the other side of the coin, maybe some insight into the real opposition, because we are told even within Rwanda itself, you do not have you know, serious opposition that can counter the RPA or the RPF and, and Kagame himself. He was the alternative voice, uh, and, okay. and that could let, be let, a let problem. Let me first of all uh, uh, agree with, with you for argument's sake that he was leading an opposition. What form of opposition? Was it an armed opposition? Was it a pacific op opposition? O o they have me, let political let party, the Rwanda let, National let, Congress, yes. RNC. So let me assume that this Rwanda National Congress was uh, a pacific opposition. Yes. Did they have supporters in Rwanda? What is the evidence that they were of any significant threat? Please, anyone supporters who knows in the Rwanda, diaspora? Please. So, so, do you think that if you were a, a Rwanda government planner, you would kill a person with a, a political party has four members? There was General Dasingwa, Gahima, uh, Karajaya, Kayuma. Kayuma. Now they had been joined by Himbara. Yeah. Five Tutsi is saying they are leading a party to liberate Hutus. Right, five. Yes. Uh, please, please, please. Yes. We need to yes. address this. Quickly. Yes. Do you really think that that group of five people would threaten a government? For the government of Rwanda to expose itself to the current ridicule it is going through, just for the sake of killing All one right, person? Andrew, just before we go, uh, we need to play mm. you this bite. Uh, one of the uh, weeklies um, that is out, an early edition, uh, did claim that the Ugandan government had actually offered the family, had allowed the family of uh, Patrick Karajaya to have, if possible, have him buried here in Uganda. Uh, we have spoken to the spokesperson at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs who actually says they have not been approached by the family uh, in writing or officially uh, for that to happen. And here's Fredo Polot with what he had to say. Media reports uh, intimating or making reference to Honorable Okelo Riem that uh, the, 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 the former spy, the spy chief of Rwanda will be buried in Uganda. Uh, that is not true, because as far as Uganda is concerned, uh, the late Kano is a citizen of Rwanda. And in any case, no formal request has been made uh, by the family for the burial uh, to take place in Uganda. Well, that is Fredo Polot speaking um, on the... Uh claims that the Ugandan government had actually uh, allowed the family of the late Patrick Areje to have him buried here in Uganda. Well, that wraps up this special edition of Newsnight, and thanks to Andrew who actually made it here on short notice. And you stay tuned to NTV Weekend Edition.